Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, September 22nd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We have a lot of systems to discuss in the Atlantic today. We'll spend most of the video on Hurricane Fiona first and then Invest 98L second, but I am quickly going to run through the other systems of interest. We have a tropical wave out in the central Atlantic, which has not developed much since yesterday and is not going anywhere fast either. So no imminent threat to land, and we won't really be talking about that one. We also have a new tropical wave, closed area of low pressure coming off of the African coastline, interacting with a rather spectacular dust cloud at the moment and is expected to move toward the northwest away from the Cabo Verde Islands and is also not an imminent threat to land, but could become a tropical storm over the next couple of days. We also have Tropical Storm Gaston way up here in the northern Atlantic. This has max winds of about 65 miles per hour, and this will be taking a looping track toward the south where it will impact the Azores Islands over the next couple of days. And so I'll briefly show you the NHC forecast for this system. Gaston taking this turn toward the south, bringing tropical storm conditions to this island group by Friday evening or so, and through the day Saturdays, it makes this slow turn toward the south and then the west. You can see in blue here all of these islands under a tropical storm warning. So everyone stay safe. Not every day that we see a tropical storm in the Azores, but we do have one going into the weekend. Okay, we'll switch gears now and talk about Hurricane Fiona for the first major part of this video. Here's the zoomed in view of the hurricane and a rather spectacular one at that, still a category four, maximum winds of 130 miles per hour. You'll see that this is still about the same level of organization that it was yesterday. Uh, some of the imperfections to note are that the eye is still partially obscured by some semi-transparent cirrus clouds not fully cleared out. This is not, you know, a Cat 5, but it is a very powerful and ever-growing storm at the moment. There is still some shear impacting it from the west, so you'll see that the northeast and eastern side is larger compared to the western side, which is comparatively smaller and drier once you get a couple hundred miles away from the center. But this is moving northeast now and will pass fairly close to the island of Bermuda, which you can see there, and the tropical storm force wind field and possibly the hurricane force wind field will intersect the island. You'll get high surf, heavy rain, all of that stuff. Uh, but thankfully, perhaps avoiding a direct strike from the eye wall where the very strongest winds over 100 miles per hour will be at the moment, it seems like the eye wall will stay off the island. And let's hope that holds. This is the recon data uh, compared to yesterday. We have still the pressure in the 930s. Uh, this is only about a couple millibars different from yesterday's flights. This has been pretty similar. Maximum winds still 120 to 130 miles per hour in these pink colors shown by the aircraft uh, estimating the surface winds as it flies through. And this has been pretty steady at a low end category four since yesterday around this time. I'll show you one model depiction today. The forecast at this point is getting pretty iced in. There's not a lot of discrepancy left in the different forecasts for this storm, but the H warp here will give you an idea of how this will look as it comes toward the northeast and then the north. You'll see that as it passes northwest of Bermuda, this is where the island is, again in purple. This is all hurricane force wind in purple and pink colors, and it's fat on the southeast side and it might reach Bermuda. It's going to be close. Odds of hurricane force winds there are about 10% according to the NHC forecast, but almost a certainty for tropical storm force winds, which are in green here. So you can see on the model again, very fat on the southeast side, and Bermuda will certainly get hammered going through Thursday night and Friday. The storm will then quickly swing northward as it interacts with an upper level trough and a cold front and transitions gradually into a non-tropical cyclone as it uh, races up toward Canada. It will take about a day between Bermuda and a landfall in Canada, which at this point is getting narrowed down to eastern Nova Scotia, right about in here. This is where the NHC forecast has landfall as well sometime on Friday night. And at this point, the exact landfall location won't matter a whole lot because look at how big this wind field is. This is a very large cyclone, wide ranging, severe impacts, power outages, storm surge, heavy rain, and high winds will spread over a large area, so don't focus too much on exactly where the center of this passes. At this point, the system will not have a well-defined eye wall as you would think of it, like it currently does now. It will not look like this. It will look much different, more like a comma cloud, more like a winter-type storm by the time it gets up there, and there will be no eye at that time. 
Here's the three-day forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see the current size of the wind field here. Yellow is 40 miles per hour or stronger. And dark red is hurricane force, 75 miles per hour or stronger. And this whole wind field will translate northeastward toward Bermuda. So you can see in red, hurricane warning in effect. And you can see given the size of this wind field in these two circles, the island will obviously in, be intersecting at least the yellow region and possibly even the red region. So there is a chance for hurricane conditions, hence the hurricane warning as the eye passes toward the northwest. This will be happening overnight tonight, on Thursday, and into Friday morning, uh, but tropical storm conditions could arrive by this afternoon or evening. This is the timing plot, kind of hard to see Bermuda here, but sometime this evening is when the timing uh, of tropical storm force winds will likely arrive, and that's almost a certainty. Hurricane force winds are about a 10% chance, like I mentioned. And then it's a very quick acceleration up toward Canada, where Friday night, tomorrow night, is when tropical storm conditions could arrive in Nova Scotia, and will spread over a large region of southeastern Canada, including western Newfoundland, during the night Friday and into the day Saturday as the system moves northward. So wide-ranging impacts, like I mentioned, over a huge area. You can visit the Canadian Hurricane Center from the Weather Office there in Canada at Environment Canada for local details for the provinces in southeastern Canada. This will be a large magnitude event relative to most tropical systems that end up impacting Canada. So do be careful, stay safe, and have a plan uh, for the impacts that are coming. So that's about it for Hurricane Fiona today. Forecast is about iced in. It's all about impacts now, and I hope everyone in Bermuda and Canada uh, stay safe over the next couple of days. We're going to switch gears now and talk about Invest 98L. This is down in the southeastern Caribbean and is our next land threat as development is expected as it moves through the Caribbean and eventually turns north, likely into the Gulf of Mexico at some point, but details are still a bit murky as we talked about yesterday. So we're going to get into it here. This is the zoomed in satellite view of the wave and at this point it's very close to being a well-defined circulation instead of just a wave pouch. You'll see that across the northern coast of Venezuela and some of these islands, there is actually southwesterly wind. And of course, you have easterlies across the northern side, and then you have northerlies and almost northwesterlies over places like Curacao. And so we almost have a center of circulation with an L stamped on it here. If we look at the ASCAT pass from a few hours ago, this is directly measured by satellite, and you can see almost the semblance of a circulation here. It is a little bit elongated back in this direction toward the southwest, so we're not quite getting that full wrapping of northwesterly winds on this back side, so it's not quite well defined yet, but it is almost a closed and well defined circ at this point. You can see 20 to 25 knot winds on the north side and impressively 20 knot southwesterlies on the south side and this is the prescient point about this particular wave is this is the eastern caribbean this is typically what they call a graveyard for tropical waves as trade winds are typically very very strong out of the east in this part of the caribbean a lot of tropical waves end up dissipating here or are completely disorganized and have to wait until central america in order to get going in this particular case, there's very little uh, surface wind motion south of Hispaniola. You see these clouds not going anywhere very quickly, and uh, therefore this wave uh, has a lot of opportunity to become well-defined, even in the face of the northerly shear that it's dealing with as it comes westward. You see this continuing push on it in the upper levels out of the northeast, and a lot of the thunderstorms are getting blown off to the southwest side. However, this wave pocket is large and robust and continues to be well defined given that the trade winds through the Caribbean are lighter than they ought to be uh, in on average. So this is a situation where the system is uh, healthy in a way that will allow it to develop later. And that is the overwhelming consensus from numerical models as well. So we are expecting this to develop by the time it gets to the Central and Western Caribbean. The question is exactly when and where. This is the European upper level flow forecast for uh, Friday afternoon, showing the location of 98L south of the Dominican Republic by that time. Just to illustrate that this wind shear will continue northeasterly wind through at least Friday and part of Saturday. But as the system comes westward, like we talked about yesterday, this easterly flow over it will lighten. And by the time we get to the point south of Jamaica, sometime on maybe Saturday night on the European model, we have a lighter shear environment with an anticyclone beginning to become centered 
over the system and much lighter flow aloft. And so conditions do become more conducive for development at this time. And I targeted yesterday kind of this longitude of Jamaica as kind of the point where development may actually begin in earnest. We do see a well-defined wave pocket right now, like I said, but shear will likely hold this down and keep development gradual um, or stagnant until it gets to this point in the Caribbean. And once it crosses this line and it begins moving into the Northwestern Caribbean, there's no reason not to expect significant development at that time. It's just a question of exactly how fast and where it goes as it does that development. This is the uh, European ensemble mean, uh, looking at the, the upper level flow over the larger part of North America here going into the weekend. So this is Sunday morning, and this is where 98L would be south of Jamaica. Just to note that as, as far as the, the general idea here of the track is, is the same as yesterday. We have a big trough digging in over the eastern US in about four to five, six days. And whatever is down here, 98L, wherever it is, will start feeling that tug toward the north in some fashion. And we talked yesterday about how there's a lot of uncertainty on where this track would actually go. And it, it is determined mostly by where it is in the Central Caribbean when it reaches uh, that vicinity of Jamaica, because that determines the launching point for where it moves into this trough. Does it curve north rather far to the east across Cuba and Florida, or does it hang south and move even into the Yucatan Peninsula before turning north in some way? It's kind of a widespread there, and this is still kind of an uncertain thing. We talked yesterday about how it would take a few days to get clarity, and uh, that is still the case today. I'm going to show you an example of exactly why uh, we're waiting for clarity in the vicinity of Jamaica, because this is a, a couple of different models that should be similar in track, the GFS and the HWARF. The HWARF takes its boundary conditions from the GFS, and so in general you would expect them to have similar tracks, but in this case they're quite different. Here's the GFS 6E run for 18Z Friday, so Friday afternoon. In black contours we see the surface low developing with 98L, and you can see the dark green uh, showing the wave axis in the mid-levels displaced a little bit due to that northeasterly shear pushing it there. As this comes toward the west, we see that the storm starts developing when the shear decreases down here, and we see the surface low kind of align with the, the axis of moisture a little bit better on the GFS. But if you look at the H wharf for the same time, we'll see this happen, and as it comes toward the west, the same kind of thing happens, and it starts developing and stacking with the mid-level wave axis as the shear decreases south of Jamaica. Now, these are two slightly different views, but if you look at this, the latitude of where this low is located is north of Honduras, and if we look at the GFS, the latitude of this development is in Nicaragua. So compare that to where the h wharf is, which is up here, very, very different locations, very different latitudes more specifically of where the GFS and h wharf show the wave ultimately consolidating. There's a couple of reasons this is occurring. If you look at, for example, the h wharf remember we have right now a fairly broad and elongated wave pocket, a large robust wave pocket, but it's still a large area of rotation. As this translates westward, it will become a question which side will see the focused development of rotation, the north side or the south side. During tropical cyclone formation, you expect the area of rotation to tighten up and consolidate, but exactly where within the larger wave pocket is the question. On the H wharf, this happens on the north side. So instead of being down here, it ends up on the north side and we see that concentration. But on the GFS, it happens on the south. You'll see that H wharf would have latched onto this part where the curved contours are here, but the GFS goes for the southern side. And so we end up with a very different launching point for where the system begins its journey uh, as it forms. This is due to not only the broadness of the wave pocket, but the presence of the northeasterly shear, because this shear kind of tilts the system toward the southwest, and on the GFS, this actually results in a favorable area of vorticity generation, or generation of spin, on the southern side of the wave axis. But on h wharf, that doesn't happen, and it focuses on the surface rotation on the north side. So there's some uncertainty there. As models tend to struggle with sheared and tilted vortices, and so this is no surprise. But you'll see the difference that this makes. On the GFS, that launching point farther to the south ends up pushing this into the Yucatan Peninsula before it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. But on the h wharf, since it starts farther north, even though it has similar steering conditions to the GFS, that launching point takes it across Cuba instead. So you can see the tremendous difference in the tracks just because of the location 
where 98L becomes a tropical storm for the first time. That's why I'm really waiting and cautioning everyone to wait until we get to here, when I think we'll have more clarity when we see 98L actually become a tropical storm and we know where it is and we can stick a pin in that location, we'll have a much better idea of where the steering flow will ultimately take the storm. But we still have two to three days to get to this point, so patience is key here. Now, of course, in areas like Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, you don't have a lot of time, so you should probably you know, be preparing for the possibility that a storm will be developing in your area regardless. But if you're living in you know, Cuba, the Yucatan, and the United States, we have uncertainty here, and you should have a plan ready to go in case a storm develops and heads your way. Uh, but there is some time yet before we will have clarity on what's going to happen. This is the European Ensemble showing the cloud of possible locations in red numbers here. And we showed this yesterday, and I want to show it again. This is three days out south of Jamaica. Again, you can see that spread in location. And you'll notice how we have an uncertainty cloud that extends from the Yucatan to the Florida, uh, to the Florida Peninsula and even the Bahamas on some of these runs. And you can see that there's a wide range of locations where a strengthening storm could track. If you look at the GFS ensemble, we get a, a similar look, but farther west. You notice the cloud of possibilities is centered from the Yucatan Channel down into Central America and the Bay of Campeche. And you'll notice that it's uh, offset to the west of the European ensemble. And again, it comes back to the launching point. If you compare south of Jamaica on both of these models, look at the difference. The European a little bit farther to the northeast compared to the GFS. It's a little subtle, but ultimately the Euro starts farther north and ends up farther north. The GFS starts farther south and ends up farther south. That's not a coincidence in this particular situation. So we really do need to wait a couple of days before we'll know where 98L is likely to go. But the overall story here is that we do expect development. You see a lot of these model runs do develop a hurricane in the Western Caribbean. Conditions will be favorable. So a significant event is probable at this point. And so we are expecting not that, but this to move and become a strong, potentially major hurricane at some point in its life, either in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. Most computer models expect that. And it's important to be prepared just in case we don't know exactly who uh, could see impacts from this developing storm. Uh, but someone likely will, unfortunately, uh, given that once you're in the Caribbean, there's nowhere to go except over land at some point. So everyone should be uh, watching very carefully in this part of the world uh, from Jamaica westward. And uh, we'll see what happens over the next few days. I'll have more updates as the week goes on. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.